Hey YouTube, Matt M. Roy back once again. Well, today I have kind of an interesting uh, computer tower to show you guys. Um, a couple of days ago, uh, a friend of mine owed me a, a favor. I'd, I'd done some work for him, and um, he couldn't pay me at the time, so he asked me uh, would I accept a, a computer tower in, in lieu of payment. And I said, um, well, yeah, let me see what you have. So he brought a couple different towers. The, uh, the first one had a, a major motherboard failure, so I didn't take that. And then the second one he showed me was this computer tower. And even though this isn't, wouldn't call this a high-end system, um, I thought it was good enough for what he owed me, so I decided to take it on trade. So what we have here is a Systemax, a Systemax Ascent uh, Custom Computer Tower. Now for those of you that don't know, the Systemax uh, computer brand is put out by uh, Tiger Direct. Which I guess the best way to describe Tiger Direct would be like Newegg's direct competitor. Um, they were very big, I remember back even when I was in school back in uh, the late 90s, early 2000s. In fact, they actually made quite a bit of the computers that we used in our school district. And up until uh, I saw this tower, I wasn't actually aware they were still in business. Um, yeah, I remember seeing YouTube videos about items that they sold, and, and they did also sell uh, name brand computers, but the ones that they made themselves, they always put this Systemax uh, name on. So, what's interesting about this tower? Well, pretty much the fact that it actually exists. Again, I was unaware that Systemax was still making towers, and this is very typical of, of what they manufactured. This is just a generic uh, PC tower could have been made by anyone. This is something like I would expect to pick up off a of new egg. As you see here in front, it has the uh, two USB 2.0 ports, though inverted. Most computer towers I've seen have them facing uh, horizontally and not vertically. Under there you have um, headphones and microphone port. Two bays for three and a half inch drives. I'm guessing they were probably thinking three and a half inch floppy and uh, memory card reader when this was new because this computer dates from around 2008 up here um, when I got the computer it actually had a DVD CD burner combo drive which of course is no good for uh, today's PC users so I replaced it with this uh, Sony um, dual layer DVD burner. This is actually the one I picked up at a garage sale uh, about a month ago that was new in box and uh, it seems to work just fine. The only problem that I had with it is um, these Sony drives at the time uh, came with um, reversible face or removable face plates. Stock it came with a white face plate and then this kind of grayish um, cover for the drive. Um, but what happened was I was able to put on the black one which was in another part of the um, packaging but when I went to put on the black uh, cover it actually wouldn't fit properly Some, somehow I guess the drive had been sitting so long that the bottom part here warped and when you try to close it the CD drive wouldn't close all the way so it would just pop back open uh, so what I wound up doing is just keeping the original gray face, uh, gray cover that went with the white face plate. And I actually think it looks pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you probably could have went either way. I even like it here because the, the, the black face plate all it said was Sony. With this one you get kind of a 3D hologram of everything this drive can do. Even this little sticker that says uh, double layer. Now, this is actually running, if you look down here, it is an AMD Athlon 64 single core processor. It's running uh, a 3500, which runs, I believe, at two, around 2.2 gigahertz. Right above here, you kind of have this uh, really interesting power button. This whole thing here is actually the power button. Kind of, I guess you call it a triangular, rectangular shape. It's kind of an interesting shape there. Um, this, I believe, is the reset button the hard drive activity light and the power light and everything was hooked up properly I was surprised because I definitely when I looked inside I definitely saw the people that had been messing around in this system 
turning to the back here, um, it's pretty typical for a computer from this uh, this decade, around 2008. 350-watt uh, um, power supply. Don't think it was no brand that I ever heard of, just probably something generic that Tiger Direct found. Probably got a good deal on them. Uh, you have your PS2 keyboard and mouse port your legacy ports, uh, serial parallel, um, VGA port, four uh, USB 2.0 ports right here. Um, this right here is the uh, wireless card I have installed. Um, 10 100 Ethernet, I don't believe that's a gigabit in here. And then your various uh, audio ports. This looks like it's actually set up for surround sound, which is kind of surprising. Um, considering that this, again, was definitely a budget system when it was built. You can look here, it does have uh, an ca a case fan, a power supply fan, and then of course the CPU fan. Now looking on the side of this case, you can see that um, originally they had an idea of maybe putting a, a, a looks like an 80 millimeter case fan um, actually on the side of the case and if you can look there you can see that's exactly where the uh, CPU fan is so that would have actually helped uh, remove the hot air from the CPU but in a single core AMD Athlon 64 that would be pretty unnecessary because it's a fairly uh, cool running CPU so pull the side of the case off you can see that massive uh, AMD f cooler CPU cooler. That fan is huge. It's actually probably more than this computer would need, but remember, it's always better to err on the side of coolness. <laughs> There's that case fan right there. Another 80 or... that's a 120, I believe. I think that's a 120 millimeter fan, so plenty of cooling right there. Here's that power supply I was talking about. It, the brand is Allied, which I've never heard of before. I'm, I'm assuming it's just one of those OEM brands. You see it says uh, ATX 350 watt switching power supply. Looks like a decent build quality. You know, it's it's nothing special, but definitely good enough for a computer like this. Um, looking at the motherboard, right here we have two gigabytes of DDR2 memory. It's uh, 667 megahertz RAM. Uh, right above here is the secondary 80 gigabyte. Um, this one is a Hitachi Desk Star drive. I just put that in for a little extra storage space. Now the main drive is kind of interesting here. I'm going to try and turn this so I can get a little better light. Right here is actually a two and a half inch uh, 160 gigabyte uh, laptop style drive. Uh, the reason that this is in here is when I got the computer, it was without memory or hard drives. And that was the only SATA hard drive I had available at the time. So what I actually did is lined it up with, in one of the five and a quarter inch bays to where I could put two pretty heavy duty screws in. And as you can see, there's actually nothing supporting it on the other side, but let me see if you can see this. If I wiggle it, you can see it's pretty sturdy in there. I mean, that drive's definitely not going anywhere. So if you guys have extra laptop drives laying around and you want to actually put them in a tower PC, you want to put them to good use, this is definitely a way to do that. You just need to make sure you have pretty two really good sturdy screws and get them in there nice and tight because you don't want any wiggling around. Uh, these laptop drives are, 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 are well made, but if they start moving around too much, you're going to definitely start seeing some uh, sector errors. Down here, you can see we have two uh, SATA ports. I believe these are SATA 3.0. They're not the new 6 gigabit SATAs. Um, just some headers on the bottom. Uh, USB headers. Um, let me see what that is. That's a floppy controller. And then just some audio uh, headers for the sound cards, which this has a built-in so they're not in use. Uh, two PCI 32-bit um, 2.0 card slots, PCI Express X16 slot, and then right above that is a uh, PCI Express X1 slot. Um, the built-in graphics here are decent enough. This is not going to be used for any kind of video production. It's going to be mainly used for. Uh, it's going to be sent to a friend of mine, 
and it's going to be used mainly for internet use and maybe watching some YouTube videos. So the built-in um, integrated graphics will be perfectly fine for that. Now this is kind of interesting. There is a sticker down here and you can read is exactly what this computer came with. Let me see if I can push this out of the way a little bit. Um, You guys can go ahead and pause the video if you want to read what that says, but originally had uh, the same CPU, the Athlon 643500, came with one gigabyte of RAM and an 80 gigabyte hard drive, and then of course the uh, combo drive. And that's another nice thing I've always seen with the System Max computers, they always put a sticker on the bottom inside the case uh, to tell you what it came with. So what I'll do is go ahead and boot this up real quick and uh, show you the performance of this uh, single core AMD Athlon CPU. Alright, we got everything hooked back up and let's go ahead and boot her up. Go ahead and turn this light off. There we go. Focus. I know this camera has issues focusing when there's a lot of light in front. There we go. She is running Windows 7. Um, I'm sorry you couldn't see the splash screen. It literally comes up for about two seconds with this computer. It's very, very quick to disappear. Might see if I can switch this to manual focus. There we go. And originally this was a Vista computer, but now of course it's been upgraded to uh, Windows 7. Um, it's taken a minute to boot up because I've just done a uh, disk defragment on the whole system. And Windows has got to reinitialize all of its cache, so it's going to take a minute to boot up. But performance on the system is actually pretty decent for a single core. And like many of you guys know, I'm not a huge AMD fan. I've had AMD computers in the past. Um, and they do okay by me, but I definitely prefer an Intel CPU. They, they're much, much better, uh, better performance, and of course they have a much better... Um, much better at cooling. Alright, well, here we are at the desktop. Go into the properties. go as you can see it it's an AMD Athlon 64 3500 so it's actually running at 2.21 gigahertz with 2 gigabytes of RAM and I went with the 32-bit version of Windows 7 because not only because of the 2 gigabytes of RAM but because it's not a dual core system uh, it'll definitely run better with in the 32-bit operating system 64-bit uh, would have run on here but a bit would have been much more demanding on the CPU now if you go into the Windows Experience Index, it gets a rating of 3.0. This actually surprised me here. The processor rating on this was a, is a 4.2. Now that's exactly the same as uh, my old gateway with the 1.86 GHz Core 2 Duo. So it's actually a pretty decent CPU. Now this rating is not the end all and be all of performance um, and ratings for CPUs, but it gives you a good idea of, of the overall performance of the processor. Uh, memory got a 5.5, which is nice. Uh, the graphics for Aero got 3.3, or Aero got 3.3, Gaming got 3.0, which is, I'm not surprised, because this is just the uh, GeForce uh, 6100 integrated card. And the hard drive's got a 4.8. Now the reason that's a little lower is because it, the main drive in this is actually a laptop drive, and that's running at uh, 5400 RPM instead of the 72. That's why that got a little bit lower rating. 
Um, but again, for what this computer is going to be used for, it's more than sufficient. And I'll show you guys the uh, graphics information. It's a NVIDIA GeForce 6100 and it's Enforce uh, 405 uh, chipset. Which I've had these in several computers in the past. As a matter of fact, the um, compact here that I did a video on yesterday, I haven't even moved this up, but I believe this has the uh, same graphics in it as well, that uh, 6100 chip. I'm actually glad that these computers have that because that means I can install Windows 7 without having to put in a better video card. As you can see, it's got 64 megabytes of dedicated RAM and then 735 of the system shared memory, which gives you a total of 799. Let's up that, it's 800 megabytes of video RAM total. And again, I know this is never going to be able to play modern games or anything, but it's not going to be used for gaming whatsoever. Here are the two hard drives. We have the uh, C drive, that 160 gigabyte of which Windows only sees 148 because you always lose some with Windows. Um, pretty much any operating system you're going to lose some uh, storage, probably one or two gigabytes. And then of course the drives are always rated a little bit higher than they actually are. And then there's that uh, 80 gigabyte um, Hitachi, uh, I think it's an Hitachi, it's a desk star drive. And that's not being used at all yet. Um, there's the DVD burner drive. And let's just open, I'll just open up um, Chrome real quick and show you that this does have decent performance. I mean, again, it's not a powerhouse system, but it's definitely more than sufficient for playing YouTube videos. Let's see if I can go to my channel real quick and I'll play one of my videos and show you the performance of the uh, G4 6100 card. see what video comes up. Um, let's see. Okay, I'll play that one, that Phenom video that I put up a couple of weeks ago. Sorry guys, I gotta wait till the uh, ad's over. There we go. Yesterday I took a trip over to the uh, Goodwill Distribution Center up in Hampton and I wanted to see uh, what they had. Uh, a few friends of mine have told me that they have a lot of uh, um, computer towers there that are like bare bone. Beefy uh, um, ATA Radeon 6670 and put in here. Uh, when the computer started to go haywire, wouldn't post anymore. So I took everything back out yesterday, and I let it sit overnight. And sure enough, this morning, it's coming back up. Now, after that, I took the RAM out and tried to turn it back on, because I wanted to see if it would give an error code. It wasn't even... Well, as you can see, it runs fairly well. It definitely doesn't do that good in high-definition mode. Um, but it's going to depend on the uh, types of videos you're going to play. But for again, for what this is going to be used for, it's more than sufficient. So that was just a quick look at what I consider an interesting computer. It's the, the Systemax Ascent Tower. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for some more interesting videos to come real soon. And have a blessed day, everybody.